Hello everyone and welcome to your Photoshop challenge. My name is Wade Acuff. I'm an artist, illustrator, and your host today. You will find assets in the starter file today. You'll find a couple of things for you. Uh, we will be using them for this holiday invitation. Uh, also, uh, there's only two more days left. Two days, two more challenges uh, left until we have our community day on Friday. So be sure to get your challenges in so I can comment and the other mentors can you know, give you feedback. Uh, and then we'll have a lot of fun on Friday, but we're gonna have fun today too. So, you know, let's get to it. Uh, today we're gonna make a holiday invitation, but it's uh, gonna be Krampus themed. Uh, holiday invitation, use CC libraries to create patterns to use on a holiday invitation. So um, let's say hi to chat real quick. What's up, Ted? What's a Krampus? Well, Krampus, Krampus night. Uh, happened, I think, two days ago or whatever. Whatever. What is today? Uh, it happened on December 5th, but, you know, there's not never a bad time for a, a party. So we're going to go ahead and make a new canvas uh, for us. I'm uh, going 6 by 4 just as kind of a standard mailer size. Uh, but we're going to talk a little bit about the library's uh, capture abilities. Uh, it, it's an Adobe capture feature that's in the... Creative Cloud Library. Uh, but first, I want to bring out the assets I, I gave you guys uh, in the starter file. I'll just bring them both out. I made them separate. They do work together. Uh, here's our little Krampus buddy we're going to be working with today. Uh, if you scale them both down, in this case, I'll bring them in so that we can take a look at them. Uh, da -da -da -da. So they work sort of like this. Uh, he's peeking over from the stocking. Um, if you double click into, or if you go into the Krampus file that's individual, you will see a little shadow layer just in case you see that pop up and you're like, hey, I don't know what that is. Well, I've just turned it off, so we don't need it for this. Um, but I also made a monogram. This is not in your file, but I just want to have this on here so that I can show you what was a capture feature in just a moment. I'm just going to place it. I'm not making this look good. It's just a thing at the moment. You know what? I can't help myself. Let's do an overlay. There we go. <laughs> Actually, they might, they might not help me with uh, the capture thing. I want to show you guys. All right, so I'm going to leave this on. <clears throat> Actually, yeah. Okay, so with uh, the capture features, uh, if you press this plus sign, you'll see uh, it'll pop up options. We can add foreground, which is our foreground color. We can add that to the library if we just uh, click it. You'll see that it's in there. You know what, in fact, I'm gonna clean out, I should have done this prior. I'm gonna clean out my libraries real quick so that we're starting fresh. That is not what I tried and wanted to do. Let's see. Grab all of these at once is the idea. Hold down the shift. All right, this should work. Okay, cool. All right, now uh, when you are, are selecting an object or a layer in this case, um, that is indicating what you're gonna be trying to add to the library or create through the capture uh, feature. But if it's a... Um, smart object like this, it won't work. So I'm gonna go ahead and rasterize our, uh, oh, I did not I rasterize, there we go. I'm gonna rasterize the monogram too. And then I'm just gonna merge these two together real quick. All right, so they're all in one layer. Now when I go to the options, it gives me this little capture logo at the top, Adobe Capture, and you can extract from the image. Uh, you can, again, take the foreground or you can make put the graphic into the library by using this. If you do all of them, it will take all of the above and anything you have selected in your layers and add them to the libraries. I just want to extract. So I'm going to extract from our little stocking image. And it first takes us into patterns, which it's really simple to work with. Uh, you have your image down here. Um, you have various shapes that you can make your patterns around. 
Uh, this kind of gives you more of like a kaleidoscope uh, way to make patterns as opposed to using pattern preview and actually making a repeating pattern. Um, so I would check it out if you ever want to make something that's fun or, you know, uh, kaleidoscope-esque. Um, but in the colors, you can change to grayscale. But if you want to keep your transparency, make sure that you use your color, uh, switch back to color. Uh, I sometimes, if there's a, uh, an image that's just white on transparent, I will go ahead and go to grayscale just so I can make the pattern that I want to make and then switch back to colors. Uh, you can scale the image. You can rotate the image. And let's, let's make something that we'll, we'll just keep to show you how this works. Uh, maybe this, I don't know. Uh, it, it, oh, the other thing you can move this around, which I think is what I'm going to do to make our image. Uh, you can move this around in the little preview box to get what you want. Now, when you click save to CC libraries, which I'm going to do now, it, it should pop up down here so you can see that you've saved it, but it doesn't close the window, which I really like, um, because you can continue to make things. In shapes, it's going to do uh, make a shape that you can reuse over and over. Um, you can invert the colors, uh, and then smoothing. It's it, really it's kind of to taste. Uh, I would, depending on what you're going to do, um, it doesn't really give you a preview of it. It just smooths it on save, uh, and I'm just going to click. We don't need to save it, but I'll do it anyway just to show that it pops up in your libraries. Let's see, um, and then color themes. We are gonna use color themes. Uh, it's kind of cool, it picks the brightest, or it picks uh, based on the mood. It will grab variations. There's not a lot of variation in our stocking as far as color, you know, just a bunch of reds and uh, grays and white. Um, but there's all these options, but you can always grab these and move these around and make selections, whatever color you'd like. So let's say I wanna keep, I wanna go muted, but I don't like this pink, I want more of a dark gray. I'm gonna save that and it's gonna save the swatches to the library that you can have. But then if that's not enough for you, you can go ahead and make another one and do this as much you know, as you need to. Um, maybe we want something really bright for this one, I don't know. And then you can make another. So you can continue to make uh, swatches save to the library. Uh, gradients, I will be using a gradient. You can add or reduce stops up to two or you know, as many, let's see, what does it go to 15? Um, but you can adjust the color gradient later anyway, but I am gonna leave it at three because I want to go ahead and make something we're gonna use later. grab something like something like that and again we can adjust this later so type is this is kind of a fun uh, feature if and I'm just choosing something that I hand has uh, you know just painted a little monogram here um, and I'm gonna see what it gives us I have no idea uh, you can select anything on the image and click find similar fonts and it will look through the font uh, Adobe fonts library and find something for you uh, eh, sure, and then you can pick, find something you like. I don't know, grab something and then click save to libraries and it's gonna save those character styles for you. Uh, and you can do this over images, uh, like this, you know, I, these were a couple of letters, but you could do it with anything. Um, if you come back in here, uh, wait, let me deselect, I think this will work. Oh, refresh, that's what we have to do, I think. So it's gonna look at the new image. So now it's just looking at these little lines and it's trying to find something that's similar. But we're not gonna save that, but we will come back to this. Uh, so I'm gonna get rid of that. We are gonna use some of the elements that we saved just then, but I'm gonna bring our Krampus figure back and now we can actually start working on the invitation. I'm gonna level him out a little bit. <clears throat> he is still a smart object and uh, I will have to make him not a smart object. He looks like a smart object though. He's, he's uh, looks like a, you know, very, very wise, I would say. 
I'm gonna put him up top. I don't know where he's gonna be placed yet because I want to bring in a scroll image, a free image that I found on Adobe Stock, stock.adobe.com. Uh, and I am gonna use our object selection, uh, possibly, if it'll work. It should be fine. Uh, I'm going to add a mask by pressing the layer mask and it's going to make a mask from the selection. And then uh, Control or Command T for transform. And I'm gonna grab the whole thing and rotate it 90 degrees. I wanna make sure that I'm not linked up here because I want to press Alt or Option and grab these handles and I'm just gonna scale this out and try to match it up relatively evenly on the sides. And that works for me. I'm gonna go ahead and make a copy of this. I'm just gonna drag this down. Um, and then I want to rasterize this image, this layer, and then I'm going to apply by right clicking again, apply layer mask. And, uh, let's see, it's, it's a little off. I might bump it a little bit to the right, hide our layer behind us. Uh, and with that, I'm going to, I'm going to press L for our lasso tool and I'm just going to scribble out this you know, maybe a paper texture at the bottom, grab it as a selection, and then pressing Alt or Option using the layer mask button, it will uh, hide the selection for us. And then from there, I'm gonna double click and I'm gonna add just the slightest of drop shadows. That's not what I'm trying to do. Double click on the layer, not the name. There we go. I'm gonna add a little drop shadow. Um, I think we're good. It's just for flavor. Uh, but you know what? I'm, I, I'm not done with this. I, our, our Krampus is now hidden. I do want him peeking out, but not like this. So let's go and uh, add a liquify effect. And I'm just gonna pull, I'm gonna use the, uh, the forward warp tool Scale it up really large, and I want a little bit of bend. And then I'm gonna scale my brush down just to kind of pull this down even further to make it look like he's maybe peeking over the top. And that might make some tension on these other ends kind of poke up, so I'm just gonna do that. And we'll see what that gets us. We may have to move it down. Okay, not bad, not bad. Uh, I will slightly move it down though. Just a little bit. Um, let's see, I think he's possibly not quite centered. Let's see, maybe, um, oh, I do, I do need to rasterize him because we're gonna use him later on and make uh, use the capture feature with him as well. Uh, I'm going to make sure that we are selected, turned our um, alignment to canvas so that I can center him pretty good. Uh, it was pretty well centered. All right, bring it back up. All right, let's add some type to this. And pressing T on the keyboard, uh, I want to make sure my font, this is just for me. You guys could choose any font you want. I'm going to go to... Uh, Metalista, yes. And I'm gonna change my font to, I know that I want it around 100. And then I'm gonna type our call to action. Uh, join us. And I'm gonna bring this down somewhere in here. And we can go ahead and use the um, swatches that we grabbed from our capture earlier by just hovering over and then select it and then bam, we got it. Uh, and then I'm just gonna drag this out uh, by pressing Alt or Option and pulling this down. Um, I think I want to, yeah, I'm definitely changing our font over to Great Vibes and then really bringing this font down. It's 24 points. It did not take here I'll do it this way there we go uh, and now we'll type out let's see what did I have for this 
Um, I'm sure it's a terrible joke. Let's see. Feeling cramped. This holiday season? Question mark? Join us for dinner. Yes, exactly. All the delicious children. Uh, yeah, this is a little different. This is a um, uh, happy-go-lucky Krampus. How about that? Sort of. Um, <clears throat> oh, I didn't tell you this. where this came from. This There was an event called uh, Feral Caroling. That's where this image was originally made and what it was made for. And the whole idea was uh, it was a bunch of streamers trying to sing uh, their, their favorite Christmas song or bad Christmas song all on the stream at the same time and it was uh something i will, I will say that because you know there's lag and there's everything it's supposed to be bad and it was it was definitely bad uh so i'm going to type uh, you know what before we do that i'm going to change our font size so that it doesn't run off the page i'm going to change uh, i'm going to type out join join our and yours can be anything you want it to be uh, join our Krampus themed caroling caroling party <clears throat> for a night on wow how does typing work for a night on the oldie townie exclamation point there we go Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, so I think I like where this is heading. I might bump this down just, just a tad. Give us a little space. Now we gotta, we gotta, we gotta make a little something out of this. This is kind of bland, but we're getting there. Uh, I'm gonna use the gradient a couple of times. I'm gonna select our join us, and if you just press on the gradient from your library that you that we made earlier, uh, it will add it. I like that. I think I want to do it down here for the. Um, info do the same thing uh, it's just good bringing a little bit of color into this uh, speaking of little color we're going to put this in the background uh, i'm going to add a new layer underneath everything call this background bg uh, and then if you double tap on your gradient it will make a gradient fill and then you can edit that gradient fill by double tapping it as well to open up and like I said, you can come in here, change the gradients to anything you'd like, uh, edit the gradients, you know, change the colors out, whatever you want to do. All I want to do for this, for mine, is just put this on a little bit of an angle. Click OK. And then uh, let's put some texture in the background, but I'm going to use the capture tools again for that. But I need our Krampus guy, a little camp Krampus buddy. Uh, and I'm going to just make a copy of him. Uh, and there's no real reason to make a copy, I don't think. I could have just done it from the one that existed. But just to play it safe, I'm going to go back to Extract from Image. And I don't want... Uh, all I want is the shape. I'm going to use the shape here. Uh, and I think I am going to turn Smoothing on. I'm going to click uh, Save to CC Library. And hopefully it'll work. There we go. I think sometimes the smoothing does take a minute. I'm going to hide that one and bring in our new one, uh, our shape. It's And you can see the smoothing, uh, but I'm going to make this really small because I want to add like a little bit of watermark on the edges, I think. Even smaller. Just This is just for some flavor. And grab this pull this over here this is a halloween or christmas invitation it's neither one it's a krampus invitation krampus night december 5th uh and then i'm gonna grab both of them and i think i'm gonna put them on an overlay just to add a little bit of uh texture to the paper a little bit of you know ornamentation uh and then i'm not done with that i want to from the shape that we made I'm going to rasterize this, press Control or Command-I to invert it, 
Uh, and then from there, I'm gonna come back to our capture tool again. And let's make a pattern for the background. It's really hard to see, you can't see it. So that's what I was saying earlier. If you press uh, grayscale, it'll switch it over where you can see the grayscale. Uh, and it's still, it's difficult to see in the little preview box down here, but you know, hopefully uh, you're looking more at the pattern that you're making. But I'm just gonna make a little bit of something like that. Maybe bring it down a little bit. Because I just want to add a little bit of texture to the background. Okay, I'm going to save that. Oh, I shouldn't have saved it. So good thing it didn't close on me because I want to switch back to colors so that I can have the transparency. But now we can close it. I'm going to hide that layer. And I'm just going to come down below... Uh, click on our background layer. Then if you double click the pattern, it will add it automatically. And then uh, you can adjust the pattern fill. I'm gonna bring this to do about 12-ish. Sure, why not? And then let's see about a, maybe a lighten or a screen. Oh, we're gonna go overlay for sure. Uh, and then I'm gonna bring the opacity down on that just to add a little bit of texture in the background. That's all, that's all I wanted. That's all I really wanted. Um, what else can we do to this? I wanted to add a border and you've seen me do this a couple of times with the shape layer. I'm going to grab uh, this rectangle tool and bring this over the top and just kind of eyeball it at first, but then come in here and align it to the center by using our alignment tools. I'm going to bring this, uh, let's see, it kind of, yeah, let's bring this down slightly, bring these edges back. Uh, and I'm just going to grab this widget, corner widget, give us a little bit of a corner. And then I'm going to hold down control. Uh, wait, you know what? Let's enter. <laughs> it already made this selection, but we'll do it again. Uh, controller command and click on the layer to grab the selection, turn that layer off, add a new layer, uh, control or command shift I to invert that selection. And then we can, um, let's do it this way. Since we have our swatches, let's go to uh, this gray, I think, or maybe, yeah, maybe this gray. I don't know, we can change it up. But what I do, when I select on these, if you notice down here in our foreground, they, it is changing our foreground as we switch. It's also changing it in the character uh, box up here, uh, the font color. Uh, but let's do, pick this lighter gray. Let's see what this looks like. Uh, and I'm gonna press Alt or Option, Backspace, and that will fill. You know what, I want the lighter gray, a darker gray, I mean. Let's try that. I do like that better. Uh, and then delete the selection. And now we have some sort of invitation um, using our capture tools. Uh, let's, let's see if we can add a little bit of flair. I do have some ornamentation here. So select uh, cal uh, calligraphic elements. Um, our, yeah, let's pull this up to the top. I don't know if we'll have time for this, but we'll, we'll try it. Uh, press T to transform, I'm gonna use one of these smaller ones up top, I think. Where, where was, where, where, what do we have here? Um, yeah, we'll try this one. So I'm moving uh, my, <laughs> I moved the pivot point by holding down Alt or Option, and that way when I scale this, it'll stay in frame. And I kinda want it big, I want it to be big and, big and bold up top. Uh, from there, I'm going to make a selection with, by selecting this, uh, let's rasterize this layer. I don't know that we needed to, but I'm going to use a uh, color range. It selects what's in there for us, and then I'm going to press Control shift j to give me only that layer, only that ornament. I'm going to pull it up to the top. Let's see, or below actually, our Krampus. Checking our time, making sure we're good. Pull this up here. 
kind of looks like it's sticking out of his ears. I don't mind it. Uh, you could always uh, make some adjustments to that. You could even bring it down here and make it really small as a little extra little motif, uh, you know, something, some ornamentation. It's a bit cramped <laughs> down there. Uh, but that is going to do it. You know what? You, before we do that, we can actually crush these using levels and make them black and kind of hide in the background a little bit more. If you want to click. Okay. There we go. Uh, all right. Well, there's your Krampus invitation, uh, holiday invitation. Uh, I hope you guys picked up a few things about learn, uh, using the capture features in the creative cloud libraries. Um, we have what's coming up next. Let's see. We have, uh, Magali Pavarino with, uh, getting, get creative with your food photography. That's coming up next. So stick around for that. And, uh, we will see you guys very soon. Bye everybody.